Friends, hello everyone. Narrator is here. Today, I want to retell the movie Horrible Bosses, the story about how the boss sexually harasses his employee at work. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press likes. Enjoy watching. The film begins with a car park early in the morning. Nick is an employee of one large company. He arrives at work at 6 in the morning and all his efforts are only to get a promotion at work. He is summoned to his office by his boss Harkin and scolded for being two minutes late. Next, we are shown Dale, another character in the film, who works as a dental assistant and recently proposed to his girlfriend. He likes his job, except that the boss is horny and always harassing him at work. The next hero is Kurt, he works as an accountant in a small firm and is completely satisfied with his work, and he considers his boss as his own father. But only the son of this boss is not the most pleasant person and a real bore, but he is the son of the boss and everyone has to endure him. Jack, the owner of the company, gets into the car and leaves the office, when suddenly his heart is missing and he dies right in the car. That same evening, three friends are sitting in a bar and talking to each other and each of them complains about how unlucky they are with their bosses, but they have no other choice. The next day, Harkin, Nick's boss, announces himself as VP of sales and Nick's hard work is in vain, he never gets the promotion he was hoping for. Nick can't quit because his boss will specifically write a bad letter of recommendation about him as an employee and in the end, Nick stays at his job. After Jack's death, his drug addict son becomes the owner of the company and he begins to scold Kurt for being late, not because he is a bum, but because he was at the funeral of his former boss and father Bobby. Bobby doesn't care about the campaign and only wants money and asks Kurt to take care of laying off some employees in order to have more profit. Further, Dale enters the office of his boss, Julia, where he stands half naked. She tries to seduce him again and tells him that he must sleep with her before the wedding so as not to destroy the marriage with his future wife. The same evening, the three of them again sit at the bar and talk about what an unbearable job everyone has. They are already thinking about quitting, as their former friend approaches them and complains that he was fired. After that, the heroes decided to hold on to work even stronger. The next day, Dale's fiancé comes to work and Julia offers to give her a free filling as a token of friendship. As he falls asleep from the anesthesia, Julia lashes out at Dale so they can sleep right now. As a result, Dale freaks out and quits, but Julia blackmails him into showing fake photos of his fiancé, where they seem to be sleeping together. He comes to his friends and offers to kill everyone's bosses in order to start living in peace. In the end, the friends decide to hire the boss to do everything and make an appointment at a motel instead of bringing him to their house. The alleged hitman arrives at the motel and spreads the tape on the floor. Now they all think that he wants to kill them, but it turns out that he is not a killer, but just a person who pisses on others for money. Nick, Kurt and Dale are driving a car and understand that in order to find a killer for them, they need to go to a criminal area and find the performer of their work in a not very prosperous restaurant. They approach the bartender, but he takes them aggressively, as a result, on the way out they come across Dean Jones, a middle-aged man who is ready to do the job for $5,000. The next day, all three withdraw money and hand it over to Jones in a bag for documents, but he is only ready to advise them, but not to participate in any way. For $5,000, he advises them to set up an accident with the bosses, and it is advisable that everyone handle their friend's boss so that everyone has an alibi. Dale and Kurt are in the car to go scouting and are just waiting for Nick. Nick fakes nausea and Harkin lets him leave work early. The three of them sit in the car and watch the house of Bobby, Kurt's boss. When the gate is open to allow Bobby's car to leave, the three of them enter the house and start walking around to set up an accident. His house turns out to be a real museum of freaks and a real lack of taste. Dale and Nick accidentally scatter a box of Bobby's cocaine, and Kurt angrily stains his hygiene products. Realizing that the operation failed, they leave. As they drive to the car, Kurt pulls out Bobby's phone and says that it will help them in the case. All three of them come to Harkin's house to investigate, and Dale is left in the car to signal if anyone goes to the house. Dale is sitting in the car throwing trash out the window as Harkin walks by. He begins to swear at him in a hostile manner for not littering, but inhales the smell of peanuts, to which he is allergic. Dale takes the syringe to give him an allergy shot as Nick and Kurt watch from the window and think that Dale killed Harkin. They run away from the house and accidentally lose Bobby's phone, which was stolen from his house. Now they know how to make an accident, slip peanuts somewhere for Harkin, and wrap poison in cocaine for Bobby. They move into position. Harkin arrives at Bobby's house because he found his phone at home and thinks his wife is cheating on him. He fires a gun at him and Nick sees it all. Friends get together again and it turns out that Kurt slept with Julia and Dale could not put peanuts in Harkin's shampoo. Together they realized that they should call the police and report Harkin that he killed Bobby. Thus, they get rid of the problems that their bosses brought them. But in the parking lot, a police officer approaches them and says that Nick's car was seen on street cameras near the place where the man was killed. They are taken to the police station, but after a while they are released because they cannot press charges. The police officer says that Bobby's house will be searched for fingerprints and DNA by detectives. Then Kurt remembered that in spite of himself he wanted to stick a toothbrush up his ass and this could lead the police to him. 
they drive quickly to Bobby's house to clean up any trail that might lead to them. They do not know what to do and go to a guy named Jones, who has already helped them. He advises them to take the murder confession and give it to the police. The three of them drive to Harkin's house to take the confession and end up at his birthday party. Harkin confesses to the murder of Bobby, but Kurt, who was supposed to record it all on a dictaphone, locked himself in the toilet with Harkin's wife and after a failure, they leave this house together, and along the way they notice searches of the house and decide to go on the run in order to don't go to jail. Harkin catches up with them in a car and the chase begins. He crashes into their car and shoots himself in the foot to set them up for the police, but the voice assistant in Kurt's car records their conversation before the shot, where Harkin confesses to the murder and is arrested. The film ends with Nick and Kurt having new bosses, and Dale solved the problem with Julia by recording her molestation on camera and thus blackmailing her. That's the whole retelling of the film Horrible Bosses, the story of how three friends decided to get rid of their bosses who got them. If you like this retelling, then do not forget to like this video and click on the subscribe button, and you can also watch other retellings on this channel.